Hi, baby. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of the For the Healthy Host podcast, where we talk about conscious living, self-awareness, and everything in between. I'm your host, Ree. Thank you for joining me and allowing me to be a part of your journey. Before we get started, of course, as usual, let's do our check-in ritual. Just want you to take a moment Feel your breath, feel how you feel in this moment, however that is, whatever may come up, just sit with that feeling for a minute. And once you've recognized it, acknowledged it, felt it, let it go. In this moment, I feel at home, not physically, but spiritually. I feel aligned. I feel grateful. Now, I will say, it took me a minute to get here, okay? This morning, I woke up feeling a little consumed. Whatever happened earlier this week, who knows when, but... I could feel the pressure, the weight of whatever that was, and I just felt so consumed. I meditated. I practiced sensual yoga. Took a long, hot shower with a candle lit. Took my time getting ready, and that helped me out so much. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. Happy to be here. (sighs) And I hope that you are well, too. You deserve to be well. You deserve to be happy. You deserve all good things. And I want you to know that. Girl, I have been reading my little ass off, okay? There is this book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. Mind you, I've had this book for like five or six years. It's been chilling on my bookshelf and I have not read it. I I, I didn't look at it. I didn't think about it. All of a sudden, I think it was last month. I something about the book caught my eye and I was like yeah let's let's get into that and so I did just that and I've been reading it front to back back to front in between and it has literally changed my life literally changed my life in ways that I can't even comprehend I can't I can comprehend most ways but just I feel so at peace most of the time. And when I don't feel at peace, when I don't feel like myself, I know how to find my way back to myself. I would be doing a disservice to you if I didn't share that wisdom, share that knowledge, that life-changing wisdom with you. So that's what we're doing today, having a conversation about the power of your subconscious mind and how to harness that power. Now, it is a lot of information. And as always, my point when I have these conversations, whether it be alone or with my partner, is not to say a whole bunch of shit that you don't understand. The point is for me to express and connect in a way that is digestible, consumable, relatable, and in a way that you can apply it to your real life. You feel me? So without further ado... Let's go ahead and get into it. I think an issue that we have as humans is the fact that we all have a mind. Every single one of us have a mind and we don't know how it works. So in order to be able to conquer something, it's important that you understand that you understand exactly how it works. So starting with how the mind works, the principles of the mind law of the mind principle is how something works just like there are principles of physics principles of mathematics principles of science anything you can think about there is a principle of that particular thing 
It is how that particular thing works. The laws and principles of the subconscious mind are no different in their workings than any other principle that you could possibly think of. This is how the mind works. Whatever you impress on your subconscious mind is expressed on the screen of space as condition, experience, or event. And the thing about it, what I just said is nothing new. I may have said it in a way that you may have not heard it before, but it's nothing new. What you think frequently becomes your frequency. What you focus on expands. The law of attraction, the law of assumption, the law of expanding influence. You are what you think you are. And everything is whatever you say it is. It's that simple. If the seeds you plant in your inner world are clouded with fear, doubt, judgment, worry, your outer world is going to reflect that. On the other hand, if the seeds you plant in your mental garden are powered by love and light and peace and gratitude, your outer world will reflect that. Simply put, your world within creates the world without. And while there is only one mind, right? Our one mind has two distinct functional parts. We have the conscious and the subconscious. Starting with our conscious mind. (sighs) I swear my conscious mind, I really be wanting to square with her sometimes. But this is the part of our mind where we process information. It's where we judge where we analyze where we obsess worry it's the part of us that is hella calculated and a thing about our conscious mind it isn't fully developed until sometime after puberty now our subconscious mind it's crazy because it's fully developed the moment we arrive here on earth side Now, when I learned this piece of information, it blew my mind. I'm like, damn, so our subconscious mind is truly who we are. It is the seat of the soul. Because when you arrive here on Earthside, we can't talk, we can't walk, we we can't do any of these things. We're simply a human being. We don't have the capability to process information. We don't have the capability to analyze, judge, obsess over anything. All we can be is who we truly are, which is rooted in our subconscious, in our intuition, in our spirit, in our soul. Our subconscious is non-analytical. It thrives off feelings and instincts, and it has absolutely no filter. It doesn't not only know what's true, what's not true, but it doesn't care. It does not care. It's where we store all of our early outside information, and it just literally takes everything at face value. Your subconscious is quite literally the blueprint. Regardless of what you think you think or what you think you believe, the answers are rooted in your subconscious, and it is evident in your behavior, in your human behavior. It's evident in how you currently live your life. You might say you believe in one thing or you think you think a certain way, but the way you move, The way you show up is the cheat code to understand exactly what it is that you believe. Even though the subconscious and the conscious mind have two distinct functions, they can work in your favor or against you. Either way, they're going to be working together regardless. Think about it like this. Your mind is a garden and you are the gardener all day, every day. You're planting seeds in your subconscious, whether you realize it or not. You are thinking something. You are perceiving yourself. You are perceiving life. You are perceiving the world in the way that it works all day long. Again, whether you are consciously aware of it or not. A lot of times we're not aware of the seeds that we're planting in our subconscious mind because It is habitual. And when something is habitual, you don't have to think about it. There's no effort put into it. So why would you notice it? Why would you pay attention to it? Especially since 
you've been habitually thinking a certain way and perceiving life a certain way for so long. What you consciously think, and I say consciously very loosely, because again, you may or may not be aware of it. What you consciously think, whether you are aware of it or not, is impressed on your subconscious. And once these impressions are made on your subconscious, your subconscious automatically begins to execute those thoughts. It does every single thing in its power to make sure what you consciously thought about is true. Whether it is good or bad, your subconscious is going to do everything in its power to execute what you think, what you feed it, what you plant in it, in that garden. Earlier, I mentioned how our conscious minds isn't fully developed until after we've hit puberty. In the midst of our conscious mind developing, we are bombarded with so much conditioning, so many influences, so many suggestions. And as children, we can't filter any of that information. Our subconscious mind, although fully developed, takes everything at face value, does not filter anything. In the same way that when we are children, we take everything at face value. We believe everything. We have zero filter. We're so naive and so vulnerable during that time. We soak things up like a sponge. I used to hear older people say, kids are smart. Kids are always watching. They're always listening, even when you think they're not. And that is absolutely true. We take in information via words, tears, frown, laughter, hugs, the lack thereof, how we're treated, again, without filtering it. And our subconscious accepts these experiences as true. And we go out into the world with the truth that we experience, truth to us, right? That we experienced when our little conscious minds, when our little frontal lobe wasn't fully developed. And that is how we perceive the world, is how we perceive ourselves. And this truth usually goes undisturbed and unanalyzed until one day, if you're lucky, you feel this deep rooted pain this weight on your chest and your heart and you decide to wake the fuck up. One of my favorite quotes is that most of us are living in an illusion based on someone else's beliefs. Most of us are living in an illusion based on someone else's beliefs. Whose illusion are you living in right now? Is it yours? Or somebody else's. Harnessing the power of your subconscious mind for me is about remembering who the fuck you are. Before the conditioning, before the influences, before the suggestions. Who are you really? Who are you? Once you begin to remove those blockages, the conditioning, the old ways of thinking, the habitual thinking, you will return home to your truest self. I feel like I've been on the journey of returning home over and over and over and over again. I feel like there's always something there to distract me, but the glory is realizing that the distraction was a distraction. Your subconscious mind knows everything at any given point, any given time, has all the answers. Knowing this information puts me at ease. Why worry? When I'm tapped into my subconscious mind, when I give it room and space to flourish, to send me messages, to give me wisdom, to give me knowledge, there's a solution to everything. There's an answer to everything. Your subconscious mind knows no limits. It knows no bounds. It carries an infinite intelligence. It carries so much magic, so much power. It is who you are. It is the seat of your soul. And once you... Give yourself the space to be open and to connect with your subconscious. You're literally limitless. You can literally do anything when you give your subconscious the space to be heard. The most important step in beginning this journey of 
returning to yourself, of allowing yourself to harness your subconscious mind. It's becoming aware of your limiting subconscious beliefs, of the ways that you think that were suggested to you early on in life. A lot of the conditioning and a lot of the suggestions, which conditioning and suggestions can be used beautifully. Unfortunately, it's often used for evil. It's often used to control, realizing the limiting beliefs that your subconscious possesses will allow you to break free, will allow you to become anything, anybody you want to be. When it comes to reconditioning my subconscious, I love to refer to the mind-body connection. The mind-body connection is simply when you think about something, your brain can interpret it as real, even if it's just imagined. For a while, that shit worked against me. I've learned to allow it to work for me. The fact that my brain, your brain, can think of anything and feel it and your body and your soul as real, that's crazy. It's funny because what got me thinking about the mind-body connection, I went to a sushi place the other day. And when I walked in there, it didn't smell good. And when I smelled what I smelled, whatever it was that I smelled, something clicked in my mind. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to get sick from this. I'm going to get food poisoning. And that thought kept occurring. Even though I knew it was nonsense, because obviously, like, I still got the food. I ate the sushi. But while I'm eating it, I just kept feeling, like, sick. And this is the part where I was saying earlier, when I'm having a negative thought, I've learned to run interference. You're just thinking this, and your body is now feeling it. It doesn't mean that it's true just because you can feel it. That's what I had to tell myself when I was adopting a negative thought that was affecting my reality. On the other hand, like I said before, the mind-body connection is absolutely beautiful. There are plenty of studies on the mind-body connection, plenty examples, so much evidence. I mean, honestly, I am conducting a study on human behavior in I am the subject, okay? So that's the evidence for me personally. But there is so much more scientific research and evidence on the mind-body connection. And I highly encourage you to, like, just look into it. Because I know I be saying shit, and I know I'm just a girl who's talking about her experiences. But a lot of the shit that I talk about is real. Like, it's real scientific things. That being said, I love to use the mind-body connection to its advantage when I am manifesting and reconditioning my subconscious. And while there are so many ways to recondition your subconscious, to rewire your brain, for me, it starts with thoughts. It starts with how you talk to yourself. It starts with what you are saying to yourself about yourself. So I'm always affirming myself every chance I get. I'm affirming myself when I have a negative thought, or I'm saying something negative about myself, about my circumstances, I run interference with affirmations. I run interference by saying the polar opposite of that negative thought. Affirmations is the process of using words and feelings and emotions to reinforce the beliefs and feelings that you want to cultivate into your reality. Now, we all know affirmations are amazing. They're beautiful. But the thing about it, you have to feel them. You have to evoke feelings. You have to not only say, I am successful, I am beautiful, I am worthy. But it's important that you actually feel that. Now, in the beginning, it may not, it may feel like you're capping. It may feel like you're a fluke, like you're cosplaying. Because for a while, it felt like that to me. And that's okay. Keep faking. Keep cosplaying. Because the thing about it, the more you say it, the more your subconscious will start to believe it. And then you consciously can believe it. But one of the most important things, though, is that you feel it. You don't just say it without meaning, without feeling an emotion. No, you have to feel it. What does it feel like to be worthy? What emotions and what feelings come to the surface when you say you're worthy? 
what feelings, what emotions come to the surface when you say you're successful, when you say you're beautiful? What does being successful and beautiful and worthy feel like? And to put the icing on top, when you say affirmations in a meditative or a relaxed state, your subconscious is easier to influence in those states. It's more receptive to what you are saying in a relaxed and meditative state. When you are in a sleepy state, your subconscious is easier to reprogram. It's so funny. I was just telling my partner earlier, I was just like, I love being sleepy. Like, I I love being sleepy when it's time to be sleepy, if that makes sense. When it's time to go to bed, like, I love sleep because it's like I can, it's another world. I can dream easier in that world. I can, I have literally, lo- I've lucid dream is that how you say that I've lucid dreamed before and it was a while ago and I'm trying to bring myself back to be able to do that like I'm just so obsessed and I'm, I nerd out about the mind and the brain all the fucking time but like I just love being in that sleepy state because it's like a dream world and I've been planting beautiful seeds to the point where whenever I do get in a sleepy state my mind just habitually and automatically go those places because I began to like plant those seeds it's when you get a hold of that area it really can be so beautiful it's such again I know I've been worrying the hell out of this word but it's such a dream state where you can create where you can imagine and just be more open when you're in a sleepy state or meditative state or even relaxed you have direct access to your subconscious because what happens is before falling asleep or again even meditating or being relaxed your brain moves through alpha and theta brain wave states and I'm I'm gonna nerd out here a little bit can I nerd out just a little bit (laughs) alpha and theta brain wave states are associated with creativity relaxation making it so much easier for new beliefs new ways of thinking to sink into our subconscious mind. And when your brain waves are in theta or alpha, you are also in this state that is called the hypnagogic state. The hypnagogic state is it's a fertile ground for creativity and insight. And all it is is you're not really woke, but you're not really sleep either. Like you, you're in the in-between stage. Like y'all, I will literally, I feel like I exist in that state a lot because I'm forever like, first of all, I'm a sleepyhead. I have always gotten my sleep, like always. But I find myself like dozing off and I have a quick dream, a a quick ass dream about like yesterday I dreamed about whenever I was younger, I used to go to. I don't even know if it was a dream. Like I really it was my subconscious bringing a thought bringing something to me like it's so weird I don't even know what to label it as but whenever I was younger you know I grew up in a small town and there was this candy store called Buddy Crozier's and I used to go there all the time with my grandma and I used to love Fruity Tooties if you know you know okay and I just randomly thought about Fruity Tooties and I woke up and I was like hey babe did you do you like Fruity Tooties like did you ever used to eat Fruity Tooties it's so funny because a lot of geniuses like Albert Einstein he would literally allow his subconscious to speak to him he would purposely doze off take naps periodically throughout the day and he would have something like a spoon or whatever in his hand and when he would doze off the spoon would fall and he would wake up and immediately he would remember exactly what his subconscious said to him Like, I'm such a nerd for this shit. It's so intriguing to me. I love it so much. But literally, when you're in these alphas and thetas and hypnagogic stage, you have direct access to your subconscious. So saying things that you desire, that you want to manifest into your reality right before you fall asleep, right after you wake up, or when you're meditating, you are literally planting seeds to your subconscious and wondrous ways. Repetition during these states promotes something called 
neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. That's a tongue twister. But simply put, it's just your brain's ability to form new neural pathways. Your neural pathways helps reinforce positive habits, positive ways of thinking, allowing those thought processes to become more automatic over time. Because there's things, again, that you do that you don't even have to think about. When you affirm yourself, when you say these particular things to yourself that are in alignment with the life that you want, you're making those newer pathways more automatic, more habitual. So at some point, you don't even have to think that hard about the affirmations. And to make it even sweeter, doing the hypnagogic state during alpha and theta brainwave states the critical filter of the conscious mind is reduced making it easier for ideas affirmations new thought processes reconditioning to sink into the subconscious mind the critical filter of the conscious mind is the mechanism that analyzes judges and rejects new ideas, especially if they contradict what we already know. It acts as a gatekeeper, only allowing certain thoughts, certain beliefs, certain perceptions to penetrate into the subconscious mind. I know, I know, I just said a whole lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But the main thing I want you to remember is you have a choice. You can choose what you think. You're not some puppet. You're not some mindless being. You're powerful. There's so much power and magic that lies in your subconscious. By becoming aware of how you already think, not only how you think, but how the way you think harms your current reality, and harms what you desire and what you want to manifest. Figure out those limiting beliefs. It's not going to be easy being quote-unquote healed. I know from the outside looking in, it looks beautiful and peaceful. And trust me, there are some parts that are, but this shit takes work. I say I'm a worthy being to myself all the time. Because truth be told, at one point I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think I was worthy of love. I didn't think I was worthy of even just being myself. I had to shine a light on those dark parts of myself to even get to the point to where I am now. But if I did it, you can do it. So acknowledge, be gentle with yourself, and understand that the only way to change an effect is to shine the light on the cause. And the cause is your deep-rooted subconscious thoughts your deep-rooted subconscious and habitual ways of thinking. Take a look at those. Learn what thoughts work for you and what thoughts don't work for you. Rewrite your story. Tap into your subconscious. Create a new reality. Create a new life. Preferably one that you desire. One that lights you up. One that brings you peace, harmony, and love, and abundance. You have the power to do that. You just have to recognize it. You have to realize it. The power is within you. From the moment you arrived on Earth side, you knew exactly who you were. And now is the time to get reacquainted with your truest self. Today I've given you some of the tools, I hope, to do that. Use this conversation how you see fit. With that being said, I love you so, so much. From the bottom of my heart, I love you. I'm sending you so much peace, so much love, so much abundance. And everything you need in this moment. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Mwah.